Hey and welcome to this week's 5 Minute Physio Tip. I'm David Pope from Clinical Edge and today we're going to be having a chat about the lumbar spine and when flexion exercises are appropriate and when they're not. So I see a whole lot of patients, like I'm sure you do, often acute, subacute, that get pain with pain and deflection. So they get pain with sustained sitting for instance, they get pain with bending over to do their shoes and they get pain you know, with, with any of these sort of sitting in the car, anything that's flexion based, whether that's a movement or a sustained position. And what I tend to see is that I get a lot of these patients that have seen other people that have been given flexion based exercises and, and or neural gliders into those positions as well. So when we're looking at our patient's history and we're saying, what's our aggravating activities? We know that it's anything where they perform flexion. I think sometimes the reason is that you know, they've got pain and flexion because they're restricted in deflection, so they need hip stretch, stretches for their glutes or you know, something like that, or they need to perform more flexion to try and get more flexible. The unfortunate thing is that most times, if you're looking at an aggravating activity in the history and you get the patient to perform that, most times it's going to aggravate them. And it makes sense. Their body is trying to get them to avoid doing activities that are aggravating it, so if you give them more of it, you give them a piriformis stretch that brings their hip up into flexion, or you give them something else to stretch their glutes, or you give them a, a child's pose in yoga, for instance. Any of these things where you've got a, a pain that's aggravated by flexion, you're likely to stir them up. So it's a good idea if they do have that flexion-based aggravation, avoid it in the short term. And I mean, it's important to keep in mind that you don't want to threaten these movements. You don't want to make them afraid of flexion because you, you want them to be able to return to full flexion. But oftentimes, like you know, you want to avoid the aggravating activities in the short term, same as if you had a patient that had pain after 30 minutes of running. You tell them, let's do a bit less than 30 minutes, right? We'll get you progress so that you can do more, but in the short term, we need to do less to let things settle down. So same thing here. If you can take away some of those aggravating activities, some of those flexion-based sustain flexion positions or you know avoid giving them more flexion you're going to help to improve their recovery and looking at that history as well if you go right a lot of these times the times if that's their aggravation they get you know it's feels better when they stand up and they walk around so they might go oh it's hard to get out of the chair but they start to walk along and they feel a bit better so then you're going the flexion aggravated them or they got pain getting up from a flex position the extension tend to ease their pain. So now you're getting an idea about movements that you might incorporate in that er the early stages to help to improve their recovery, get them pain free, and so you're gonna incorporate those extension-based movements. So there's some ideas for you. If you get patients that do have pain into lumbar flexion, try to avoid giving them more lumbar flexion exercises. Don't give them piriformis stretches or hip flexion stretches in general, it just tends to make them worse tend to get, go towards more of those easing positions, activities in the short term, and uh, till you're reducing their pain, and then you can reintroduce those other positions and balance it out against the extension-based exercises. I'm gonna talk more in detail about you know, how to incorporate you know, flexion and extension in uh, videos for Clinical Edge members, so you'll be able to check those ones out. But this one gives you a bit of an idea about when to incorporate flexion exercises, when not to. And obviously, if you've got a patient that gets pain, a lot of their pain's into extension and any extension-based activity is relieved with flexion then and relieved with you know, sitting, it feels better after sitting for a while, then incorporate flexion activities. So an example of this is someone that's got a spinal canal stenosis. So if you've got that canal stenosis and they are in a flex position because it gives them that, that they feel better, then flexion-based exercises are great. And do you really want them? Do you go, right, you know, you've got this canal stenosis that's causing you to take pressure off your spinal cord by flexing. Do we really want you into extension and compressing that spinal cord? Probably not. So you're not gonna try and give them extension exercise and just compress that spinal cord and, and, and do those sort of things because it's gonna aggravate them, it's gonna make them worse. So that's a time where flexion exercises actually are really good. Uh, yeah, so look once again, look at those aggravating and easing factors, look at sustained positions, look at movements that aggravate them, 
move it to some positions that ease them and start to target your early treatment and your management of the patient around those aggravating and easing factors. So I hope that helps you out with your flexion extension based activities for low back pain. So I'll catch you on a future episode of 5 Minute Physio Tips. Have a great week.